<laughs> Jesus. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 84. 84. Of Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics. We did something very weird, which we didn't take four weeks off between episodes. <laughs> yeah, so hope you're ready. Oh, my Lord. And uh, uh, we got, I got to talk about this right away. We got a person, a new person commenting on one of our videos. Okay. And they said maybe the most disturbing thing anybody's ever said under our, our videos. And that was, they said, I've watched every episode. Wow. I feel like they're a danger to themselves and others. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, a, yeah, that's a fully a symptom. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Don't know of what. That's very nice. Um, talked about uh, Vienna, uh, which is an early episode. Yeah, that was pretty early on. Said that Vienna is a masterpiece, and then it was like, were they saying our show about Vienna is a masterpiece? Oh yeah, Vienna, Vienna, the episode. Right. Was it was a masterpiece? Or the song, because uh, I w hope both are true. I hope they're both masterpieces. I know that Vienna is. <laughs> and now you don't know which one I mean. Uh, but wow. yeah, they claim to have watched. And also I'm like, or are you making fun of me? Hmm. No, it's probably the first thing. They're crazy. Yeah. The first Delightfully thing so. I'm that's great. Uh and then this would be the perfect time to say, hey, long time listener, first time caller, because first time I've ever heard from this person. So <laughs> very that, long time listener. Yeah. So it would be apt. You could, unless they were like, I've watched every episode, started three days ago. <laughs> right. I'm uh, strung, I'm strung out on Coke. <laughs> i really want to die i haven't i just haven't slept your shows i've kept hoping jim's voice has put me to sleep almost <laughs> it's kept me right in that weird zone in between yeah Where, then, am i asleep oh no i'm not and then sometimes Maybe they're just like i'm gonna keep watching until they talk about leningrad <laughs> then i'm out then that's it good news <laughs> we're gonna save your life tonight Oh my God. Yeah. God. I just, it's amazing to me because I, again, as you said, I quoted you this week about me at dinner. I was with a friend and I was talking about this show. And I said, I quoted you as you said that I seem to be playing, uh, I seem to be living a life where I'm daring myself to do things. Or yeah. And I was like, God, that's just about a perfect description. <laughs> uh, how i've gone about things <laughs> yeah know. it's working it, is it it's working fine Some version of working yes it is it, get, it's moving get, the plot forward i get to do stand-up i'm housed right you know there certainly those are two more things than my mom thought were possible <laughs> you're 84 episodes into an exercise in futility <laughs> and joy. Yep. And dumbness. My um time to tell you about the first time my mom saw me do stand up. How deep into your career was that? Not Less very than a year. Less than a year, yeah. Oh no. Yeah. And uh you saw my stand up back then. I did. And it was... Yeah, which it, location was it that your mom saw you? Tequila Mockingbird, baby. Hell yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you upset about Tequila Mockingbird? I get it. Yeah, they still owe you some mocking bucks. Oh man, I owe them something. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Um, but yeah, my mother was there and my sister Janet, which was rare because my sister is Muslim and doesn't drink. And so bars are kind of dumb for her. Got it. And would typically not go to a bar anyway. But for some reason, she's like, well, Jimmy's doing stand-up, so I'll go see this thing. Fantastic. And, uh, 
I believe now I'm saying that's the first time my mom saw me do stand up and it might have been the last as well. <laughs> Although what, was there a review? Yes. But I remember being in the parking lot afterwards and my mother and uh my sister were both both said more or less a version of wow Jimmy you sure do curse a lot on stage. <laughs> Yeah, that's back true. then I did a lot. You did a lot. Just a lot. And especially if there was a heckler and it made me mad, then I definitely had shit to say because I just I have I have no patience for hecklers. I still don't. Right, but you have a strategy now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. My strategy is usually to say a thing and work over what they're saying. And get them to stop. I don't enjoy get out because Walter's just not going to shut up. If you say <laughs> All right, fuck this cat is great. See, so yeah, I just cursed right then. Hey, did the <laughs> light just get better on my face, or did I just get less red? Oh, it did. It did get better for a second. Now you're uh, there's some yeah. There's like you have a three inch zone where you can sit and be lit. <laughs> Well, listen, well, if you're watching just every now and then, say when it was and comment on that time code. That's your job as a listener. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's, I, it's more engaging when they have a job. Exactly. Yeah, I cursed <laughs> like, oh, like a banshee back then. I'm just constant, unnecessary. And you couldn't tell me that, of course, like any dumb comedian in their 20s. Yep. You know, now I've done shows where I was, now I've done clean shows because that was what I was booked to do. And I'm like, oh, I can do this now. So great. I do have to be self-aware because in conversation, I'm a casual cursor, of course. I'm an Irish fella. And... Do you find uh, when you do clean shows, I'm guessing there's less heckling probably? Yeah, much less. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And yeah. I'm always the best on the bill on a clean show. Always, always, great. always. Because there's always at least two or three comedians who the only thing they have to offer is that they're clean. <laughs> right. Because Jim Gaffigan is a clean comedian, but he doesn't market himself as one. Right. He happens to be one. And then every now and then he's not because that's not his thing. It's a coincidence. Right. And it's always jarring, but then you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. it's allowed. Yeah, he can say things and they're never like terrible. It's like he's never like why is this lady being such a cunt <laughs> yeah although I go, hopefully someday <laughs> oh, that. that's for that show you and i want him to do <laughs> that's right <laughs> um but and, and at least one viewer will know because he's watched every episode oh yeah but just one you got um, a lot of time codes to look up <laughs> But yeah, that was the first time my mom saw me do stand up, and she was supportive as much as she just wasn't mean. she wasn't mean about it. So yeah. that's good enough. All right, I love you so much, but you gotta get out. <laughs> okay, you can come in or out. In or out, Chandler. Chandler, get in. Chandler, get in. Why don't you get out? Everybody else, shut up. All right, there's a lot of animals at this house. There are so many animals at this house. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. freeze. That's the perfect lighting. It Just can't be comfortable. Too close. Yep. Oh, well, we'll live with that. <laughs> we will live with that. Nice to know it's there. Yep. Actually, maybe it was just closing the door. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> was there some darkness coming in from the other room? It makes sense because there's a long hallway right there and and its light does stream in and there's a lot of shadow. So this just, and this just closes in the light. That makes sense. It makes some sense, yeah. I guess. Well, we did it, everybody. We did it, you guys. So here's now this. me. Huh? Now let's do me. Yeah, exactly. I have well, a lens flare. Yeah. I don't oh. know. You have too lovely an open space to fix, no matter what, because it's just a lovely open space. Hold on. <laughs> I'm assuming that's where the camera is. Oh yeah, I like that. It's that's very yeah, uh, better. It's very strange new worlds. Yeah, I was gonna say you've definitely got some J.J. Abrams lens flare there. That's perfect. I'll take it. Uh, no, that you did great. Ah, uh, listen, we did it, everybody. We did it twice. 
This is uh, my favorite reason for picking a Billy Joel song. Because uh, sometimes, like, we picked, you picked Vienna because I think you said that was your favorite Billy Joel song, yep. right? Yep, beautiful. I, I think I claimed that Scenes from an Italian Restaurant is my favorite song, but with the caveat that my favorite song changes. Sure. And then uh, some songs we, we've hate listened to for sure. Yep. And then uh, we picked, I picked a song because Lena, a friend of ours, a girl said, hey, review the song Lena. And then I said, right. well, we don't really review songs, but kind of, but okay. And it made perfect sense. Alex picked this song because he looked at a list and said, ah, oh, we haven't done that one. Yeah. And I will say like, that's often my reason. Yeah. yeah. That I'm, I'm sure we didn't talk about that. Yeah, and this was just in full honesty, full disclosure. That's the reason. That was the, that the was reason. The, and you know, you can watch these in any order. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what our friend did. Probably chronologically. Yeah, as they came out. Um, but you don't have to. If you don't want to hear about Leningrad. Yeah. A, I might not blame you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and B, you don't got to do it. Yeah. So here's first impression of this song. Well, I my opinion was pretty solid before you even before I even listened to it for this episode because I've listened to the song a lot, and it is it does stick with you. You're not you never go Leningrad. Which one is that? Nope. You know exactly what it sounds like. Yeah. And it's a dirge. It's a dirge. It starts out. It's well written. Musically, it's well written. I just don't know if I like it musically, but not in a bad way. More like you just kind of sometimes you don't like things. And you're not always up for a dirge. Yeah. And it starts off committed to that pace and it's relentless. Yeah. I mean, the drum is jarring because there's a drum at one point that goes. <clears throat> <clears throat> like, yeah, like I could play that drum part, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, yeah, and you're just so happy that it's like, oh, it's something new, mm -hmm. you know, it's just that, and it's just relentless. And I get why I get that it's an artistic choice, it is the song's music mirrors. Well, first of all, it sounds like what you might imagine Russian music sounds like, a very Billy Joel um, would do. Yep. Is that really what Russian music sounds like? Probably not. Probably, it's probably, yeah, it's like what a kid from Long Island thinks Russian music sounds like. It's yeah. either that or he stole the exact notes from some Russian composer. Oh, some classical piece, yeah. Um, I'll bet there's like those first lilting notes. I'm like, oh, I'll bet that's like some Russian composer. And he thought, oh, now it'll sound Russian. And it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> because it's not all the same. Yeah. Not all Russian music is identical. Yeah. He picked some guy at random. It's like if you picked a random artist like Ween, and you were like, all right, that's what American music sounds like. Right. Well, you know, you you have to pick like uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash or the Eagles. Yeah. You Country can't... music and anime, by the way. Country music and anime, when people satirize both those forms, most of the time, they make the exact same move. Yeah. As a result, nobody who actually listens to country music or watches anime will be particularly amused because it's annoying that you went well country song it's like well, it's not all about dogs and being drunk nope and the anime it's not always this dumb cliche about the high voice and the whatever <laughs> right the so gasping that, yeah so that one people and there's not always a giant robot to be fair, there is a giant robot a lot. Yep. But there's not always a giant robot. Right. So or drunk robot dog. <laughs> you're, are you satirizing a, a subsection? Right. Oh. It's like giant robot anime is very different. 
from Frightened Maid anime. Yeah, or from or from uh, Nagasaki anime or manga. <laughs> right. right. I've read and are pretty disturbing and interesting. Huh. Yeah, written by a man. There's a couple famous ones that are written by a man who became very big in manga, but that was a personal thing he did because when he when he was a kid, the bombs fell. Ah. Yeah. So he not unrelated to our topic. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, um, I listened to this song and I think the lyrics are pretty well written. Yes. A little bit just a list of stuff that happened, but not in a poignant way. Yeah. Um, but I thought like these would be good lyrics that you could just put in or like a rock song, like an up tempo rock and roll song. Yeah. Um it doesn't have to like the lyrics are dirgy and the music is dirgy, but it'd be more interesting to play against type. You 100%. Know? I love a, a upbeat song about a bummer topic. Me too. Um, I think I may have mentioned before, Alone Again Naturally is one of my favorite songs. Great. Gilbert O'Sullivan. And it's a, it's a fun little bop. And then he mentions killing himself. Yeah. I like uh, Common People. Yeah. Uh, very poppy song about being uh, miserably poor. <laughs> yes, Absolutely. And there's a lot of good songs like that. And, and you're right. I think this would have been a good candidate for it. And it's just a tendency he has to, well, gosh, fuck, I don't write music. So it's obviously he's looking for a way to write a different tune because he's like, hey, what else can I write? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What else can I sound like? Yeah. Because you got to the end of your, and the truth is he, I don't know, more often he should have just decided or could have just, I shouldn't say should have, he did fine. But more often than not, I prefer him to just decide to sound like Billy Joel. So I think you're right. A nice little rock and roll tune for this would have been good. You know, I think um, this is, you know, pretty much based on the true story. Yeah. Him meeting this guy at a concert that he did famously over there. Yeah. Um, and I think it like meeting that guy was very impactful for him. Yeah. And uh, it was a poignant moment. And I think he couldn't see performing it any other way. Yeah. Except for like, I'm going to like lean on how important this is. Mm -hmm. It it just uh, weighs it all down. Oh, you're right. Yeah. By the way, side note. Do you know what style only the good die young was originally written in? I do. Um, so glad that didn't happen. So glad that didn't happen. And thank we have Liberty DeVito to thank for it. Yeah. Go uh, ahead and tell the folks. Uh, reggae. <laughs> it just, just, you know, there's that. And also, we didn't start the fire. He wanted to do as a rap. Oh, my gosh. Yes. And somebody had to like pull him into a room and go, dude. All right. If you're. If you're listening right now, close your eyes for just a second. Alex, you don't have to close your eyes, but just okay. picture. because And then you can look it up. He actually does a version. Oh, come out, Virginia. Don't let me wait. That's how it was going to be. Yeah. Oh. Don't let me wait, man. <laughs> <laughs> you got to let girls. 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 Ah. I, I hope if he ever did it, I hope at some point he referenced, he was just like, um, um, did she ever say a prayer to Ja? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. What a... it, it's so heartening to know that uh, great artists also have terrible instincts. Yeah. And yeah. I like, there. he tells the story, I'm sure he's told the story more than once, but he insists that members of his band didn't like reggae, and that's why they didn't do that. And I'm like, <laughs> that is them being nice to you, because that's not why they didn't want you to do it. Oh, they saved your life, bro. God, yeah, they they don't like reggae. Wow. <laughs> yeah. 
bonehead musicians from yeah. Long Island. Like they fucking love reggae. They just yeah, know. I was sing. gonna say. I was gonna say. It's not that they don't like reggae. They love it. Yeah, it might be. They, <laughs> they love it. They respect it. Yeah, you remember the song, right? I don't like reggae. I love it. <laughs> 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 was actually referencing a reggae lyric from an actual reggae band, not some, some from some fucking piano mover from Long Island. Jesus. <laughs> uh, but it's just oh. very funny because it's like he he has that instinct and it comes from a good place. It comes from love of a lot of music. Yes. And like wanting to be it, it is respectful. Like, I think he wasn't like, I'm going to make fun of reggae. Yeah. He's like, oh, I like reggae and I respect it and I want to try to do it. And, and uh, somebody had to be like, no, respecting it means you don't do it. Yeah. It so doesn't even work. Staying out. It doesn't even work when the Beatles try to do it. No. It doesn't <laughs> work when, like, UB40 tries to do it. Oh, yeah. Somebody brought up UB40 the other day and referenced them and called them a reggae group and it made me mad. I was like, they're not. No. They are only in as much as they... You can only call them reggae in as much as you can't call them anything else. Right. Which is unfortunate. Yeah. Forcing your hand. Yeah. It's because the subgenre isn't officially called poser. So you don't <laughs> call them right. that. Poser reggae. Um. But yeah, this the song, by the way, no middle bridge that does anything weird, which is probably for the better. Yeah. Although it would have been nice to have a break. Maybe it would have been great if they put in a middle bridge where the, you were supposed to do that kick and dance. <laughs> the kick and dance. The, the old squat and kick. The old squat and kick, as they called it in, in Mother Russia. Mother Russia. But we get those two words come from Russia. That's right. Hey, do you know any Russian people, by the way? Uh, yes. Me we have too. a writer on our show who is Russian. And uh, how long American? Oh, since she was four. Oh, not what I mean then. Do you know anybody who lives in the United States and grew up a significant amount of time in Russia before then? That I do not. I knew, I've known a couple, and they all had a similar... Um, acceptance that life is pretty stupid. And they had such a, they had this, that's the only way I can describe it. I'm sure it's been described better. <laughs> it's always just pretty funny to meet somebody who was actually grew up in Russia and their point of view is very matter of fact. Uh, this is the way it is. <laughs> yeah. And this it's, song works for me fun. on that level. Yeah, it does. They're like, well, here are some things that happened. Yep. Yep. I mean, for all I know, if you listen to this song in Russia, you were in Russia with other Russians, I wouldn't be surprised if one of them goes, oh, this is one of my favorite Billy Joel songs. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Like, hilarious? Yeah, yeah. It's funny, right? It's intentionally yeah, yeah. funny. I believe this man made it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, there's a decent chance. Uh, <laughs> all right, so I loaded up these lyrics. Let's pop over there. Hold on, let's see if anybody there. Yeah. All right. And, uh, already the sh lyric shape. Yeah. Is not ideal. It's very blocky. <laughs> very blocky. It's very it's like uh, to be reading prose. Yeah. Victor was born in the spring of '44, and never saw his father anymore. A child of sacrifice, a child of war, another son who never had a father after Leningrad. Well, that's pretty much a bummer, but pretty cool as far yeah. as lyrics. I understand everything that's going on, and they're worthy things to say out loud. Yes, and weighty things. Um, I'm a little ignorant that I don't know what he means by Leningrad. Obviously, I, there was a battle. Yeah. Me too. Uh, I did not decide to educate myself because I thought I'd rather try to get it from the song. So we'll yeah. See. Yeah. <laughs> um, some sort, uh, I guess, World War II battle at Leningrad. Yeah. 
which is a you know a deficit in our educational system is that we never learned about that part of World War II. Yeah. So there is as far as I know happened in France and Japan. <laughs> yep. <laughs> There's then, a great series of videos if you want to watch on called Today I Learned. And uh, they do a, and he does a series on how World War II is taught in other countries. Oh, fun. And it's interesting, and just a quick quick synopsis this way, in Germany, unflinching is how they teach it. Right. It is just, yeah. Be, and partly because they knew they had a whole populace to deprogram, so that was part of the reason it ended up being that way. Right. In right. Japan, it's almost as if they teach it this way. Yeah, uh, yeah. Suddenly they dropped these two big bombs on us, and we're just we don't know what we don't know why. <laughs> and it's undertaught there. Yeah, I'd be curious about uh, the other like Eastern Bloc areas, Poland. Like, how do they? What do they cover in Poland? Or uh, you yeah. know, Ukraine is Uzbekistan. <laughs> like what? Yeah. What did they hear about it? Russia in general is an interesting thing because they weren't our enemy. No. But subsequently, we're not particularly getting along. So is there, do they teach, you know, we thought we were cool up until the war ended and then they suddenly were starting to be dicks. I don't know <laughs> what, you know. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. we kind of teach it that way too, really. In as much as we teach anything about Russia. True. We sort of teach it like uh, the, you know, like it's uh, good versus evil. Yeah. Um, with no no fuzzy areas in between. Yeah. Um, we got in just in time. <laughs> yeah. And we saved the world. Yeah. And which is funny when you consider that you end up finding out that the greatest hero um in the war was probably russian real estate <laughs> more than any 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 people just you know this is a long slog and that helped out a lot yeah victory uh big victory for mud <laughs> yes we're also doing great work in ukraine i'm told yeah oh my god yes mud uh, Never had anyway. a talk after Leningrad. That's a bummer. That I don't have any problem with any of this. I don't. There's no weird rhyming. There's no nope. shoehorned in anything. It's just a story. Victor was born in the spring of '44. Never saw his father anymore. That's fine. Child of sacrifice. Child of war. Another son who never had a father after Leningrad. You learn so much. You learn his dad. His dad died when he was pretty young. Yep. In, he died because of war, and he's not alone. This is a banal, common thing yeah. in this region of the world. Yes, that's a very common phenomenon. Yeah, and again, looking at it again, I'm like, this should have been like a almost a punk song. Yep, it has it, the lyric. The lyrical structure would work perfectly. Yep, just churn away, but then you'd probably not hear the words. Vector was born. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Bruno Mars, if you're out there. Yeah, and we and know you know are. some young people. Maybe that is it. That maybe that was his fake name because he's embarrassed. He's watched every episode. Oh, I'll, I'll bet. <laughs> it's like I'm supposed to be working on an album, but I gotta, I gotta see one more. Yeah, they dropped, oh, they dropped, finally dropped Leningrad. Woo. <laughs> finally, I can go back to the studio after this. So inspired. <laughs> All right, you're wow. I'm going to go. Went off to school and learned to serve the state. Followed the rules and drank his vodka straight. The only way to live was drown the hate. The Russian life was very sad, and such was life in Leningrad. The only lyric I didn't enjoy, and I seem to like it better 
hearing you read it, which is maybe a testament to the fact that you're you're right that this maybe what is served by being a a boppy song that hit hit sadness is the when he sings a Russian life was very sad. It's like super melodramatic <laughs> yeah. because you also saying the word sad sad. Yeah, which I I'm not a fan of in general. I'm generally, I however you communicate what you're communicating to me. You this just the a Russian life is very sad is just very bonked on the head with it. Yeah, a la a Russian puppet show you'd watch. <laughs> oh yeah, and uh, yeah. So like, if you're gonna be that straightforward, at least put in something to create tension. Mm-hmm a wacky note or sing it weird or something but it's really like it was really delivered yeah direct to your door i also don't love drank his vodka straight and like if there's any <laughs> if you're trying to avoid cliches which you're obviously you're not you should be trying to avoid cliches yeah some there's got to be something similar to convey the same thing that isn't just like what's in every lazy action movie yeah, you could, um, I mean, yeah, you could even just say liquor, drink his liquor straight. Sure, we know. But, yeah, I I, I think you've elucidated it really well, because I wasn't sure what was sort of bothering me about that, other than that it, it did feel uninspired. But you're right, because it is just one more little it's just a little cliche oh it's probably true <laughs> so i'm sure it's true that's you know they always the argument for a cliche <laughs> yeah and in this particular one yeah this one is brutally true because you know why does certain parts of the world eat a lot of rice because a lot of rice was available yeah why did the irish eat potatoes because it's easy to grow a potato and that's what they could do and why would you have vodka because it's easy to grow a potato <laughs> yeah you're not going to drink wine. Nope. You'd probably enjoy it, but also you're not going to be able to grow grapes. Pro. Yeah, this is the fastest way to get drunk. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, just having a cliche. I mean, the music is flat. Yeah. The lyrics are very factual, which kind of flattens them out. And yeah. just to put a cliche on top of that is, ugh. Yeah. Give and me I, anything. I do like straight vodka myself. It happens to be one of my favorites. So I'll agree with the sentiment. Or I agree with Victor. Drink your vodka straight. <laughs> there you go. Um, but that's aside from the lyrics. I'm just telling you. And then also, if you like a Vic, uh, vodka cranberry, I, I got no problem with you. We're fine. Oh, that's nice. I'll still go karaoke with you. <laughs> I I feel like I've moved back to beer. Our, I, our, little, our little trip to Ireland and all those pints in yeah. pubs. And I was like, oh, this is nice. Dude, I had a surprise beer in a bar two nights ago because I wasn't planning on going to a bar. Yeah. And a buddy of mine, we were just taking a walk because we need, let's just, hey, we're old. Let's make sure the body's still working. Let's take a walk. And we were passing this bar and he was like, well, oh, you don't need it except to drive. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so I had a hard cider, a uh, beer cider. Oh yeah, so great, nice. And uh, they had sports on, and even though I I couldn't care less, but I was like, oh, this feels nice. That I was yeah. the best thing on the TV. The tattooed bartender is ignoring me. This is great. Just like old times. Yeah, but she wasn't ignoring me too much. She was ignoring me enough. <laughs> She was like, I will get your drink. I'm, you know, I almost got the impression that she was like, I'm worried this is the kind of customer that will start flirting. And I wasn't, but I understand why she think that. Yeah. So she's like, I want to make sure he knows from the beginning, this is all business. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, I was born in 49. Uh, is that, by the way, when Billy Joel was born? It is. Okay. So this is him. This is him now. He's talking about himself. A Cold War kid in McCarthy time. Stop him at the 30th parallel. Blast those yellow reds to hell. 
I'm not sure that's correct because I mean, <laughs> blast those reds to hell makes sense. But at this time, they were also already using yellow. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying, right? You don't call. I, think I do. Yeah, you don't. You don't call the reds yellow. Yellow, you've got for the Vietnamese. Yeah, well, he's talking about the Koreans. The Koreans, yeah, but yellow reds. Is that who he's talking about? Okay, the, see, this is how ignorant I am because we were talking about Russia. Okay. Yeah, we were talking about Russia, but now we're talking about him and his war experience. Oh, I get, yeah, his not going experience. And he references that, which is good. He doesn't yeah. kind of go in the song because I think that would have pissed people off. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you know what? I was just ignorant. So blast those yellow reds to hell. Blast those yellow commies. Get I get it. Yeah, you get it. And Cold War kids were hard to kill. Not that hard. <laughs> Under their desks in an air raid drill. Haven't they heard we won the war? This I like this lyric a lot. Yeah, Haven't that's pretty great. Right. We won the war. What do they keep on fighting for? That's a very good lyric. That's a very good lyric. And it needs it. Yep. Under the desks. In, that. Yeah. Under the desks in an air raid drill is also a good lyric. Yep. Evocative. Oh. I can remember doing it. Yeah. Ours were more nuclear drills, but it was the same same yeah. hiding place. Yep. And same cold. also for tornado drills. Yeah. We were relying on those desks for they were doing a lot of heavy lifting. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they were supposed to solve every problem we had. I gotta get one of those desks. Right? Things are getting bad. Hates me. Get under the desk. <laughs> all our kids were hard to kill i wonder is that irony because they weren't unfortunately that hard to kill yeah i don't yeah, know numbers. what that means I'm, i guess maybe the idea cold, cold war kids were hard to kill under their desk in an air raid drill we were taught from very young to fight maybe maybe i maybe like it if it's sarcastic i would prefer it too and then like, oh, they were hard to kill because they were under their desks. Yeah. <laughs> They're hard to kill under our desks in an air raid drill. Why didn't we bring the desks to Korea? <laughs> Next time. Big mistake, yeah. Spent all this money on war and you couldn't spare some money for the desks. I like that he was like, this is what Victor was doing. This is what I was doing. Me too. That is around, really around the same time, um, or what our countries were up to. Yeah. Um, and then it goes back to Victor. Victor was sent to some Red Army town, served out his time, became a circus clown, <laughs> which again is just true. Yeah. Which it's you know they always say you should write write what you know. And so, but sometimes uh, the true thing sounds stupid. Yeah. And this might be it. Because and now I think it just gets super cheesy. It does. Uh, my my initial reaction to this part was, did Jerry Lewis write this part? Because it feels <laughs> it's yeah. the kind of thing Jerry Lewis would write when he's trying to be deep. Mm -hmm. Like I loved Jerry Lewis, but man, when he would talk about how, you know, clowns are sad and like, oh, okay. Right. They, they give everything so that other people can be happy. Yeah. That's why they have to paint on the smile. Ugh. Okay. Okay, bud. You are never a clown. You were never a clown. Yeah. Although in the beginning, I, I do love that his career started out doing a record act and the fact that that could make you famous is amazing. It's, you know, when is the last time that happened? God. Nichols in May. Yeah. Or Andy Kaufman, I guess. Or Andy Kaufman. Okay. Getting closer. But yeah, but that's, a, but and even that is a subversion of the record act. <laughs> right. 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 Wow. Like, the great, the great, sorry i was gonna keep going oh yeah go ahead 
the greatest happiness he'd ever found was making Russian children glad. And children lived in Leningrad. Uh, the end there is terrible. Was making Russian children glad. Oh, children were living in Leningrad. That's just, we know because he became a circus clown. Oh. He children. painted himself into a corner where he had to get back to the word Leningrad. Yeah. He was he wanted to make Russian children glad. Yeah, good news. Yeah. There were Russian children living in Leningrad. It right. all worked out. Yeah, isn't that actually nice now? <laughs> uh but children lived in Levittown. And by the way, I looked up some Levittown trivia because I think you used Levittown as a trivia question before. I probably did. And uh but children lived in Levittown and hid in the shelters underground until the Soviets turned their ships around and tore the Cuban missiles down and under the Cuban Missile Crisis. Uh, and in that bright October sun, we knew our childhood days were done. I Good. Yeah. And I, I was innocence there. Yeah. And then I like this line a lot, and it's a bummer. But I like the honesty of it. Yep. I watched my friends go off to war. What do they keep on fighting for? He said, he ain't pretending he went. <laughs> yeah. Which is good. Right. And I think he's fine to not have gone up as, you know. Totally. I get why some people of his generation held it against him for a while. Because yep. he could be mad about stuff, but... Seems like history may have vindicated him in this count. Yeah. 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 The anti-war protesters were 100% right, except for not respecting the veterans, but <laughs> right. you can't be, it's yeah. hard to get that part right because you associate them with a great wrong, even though they're just kids. Yeah, and protesting is a thing that had to evolve. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was just all rage and yeah. no focus. Well, and isn't it just the truest thing that so many times people mispoint their anger and it's like there's always a rich guy off to the side going, hee hee, I'm glad they're mad at them. Yes, it's so true. There's and, all... you know, and lots of machinations uh, to yeah. make that happen. Indeed. You know, we're about, this is not uh, equivalent by any means, but we're about to see the same thing with this strike. You're going to see the studios say that the writers are fucking it up for the actors or the actors are fucking it up for the writers and try to get them to blame each other. Yeah. And the whole problem is yachts. Yeah. And if they can't do that, then it's like, think of all those craft services people who are out of work. Oh, yeah. Well, they're already on that. Yeah. Yep. They're oh, they're shutting down this town. Nope. Yeah. No, Not you, by no, you are. No, you are. No, you are. I watched my friends go off to war. What do they keep on fighting for? I like the repeat of the phrase. It makes sense. It's not yeah. it's a repeat, but it's not repetitive. It's, I like that the first time he was talking about the yellow reds, and this time he's talking about the uh American. Yeah kids yeah that's clever that's everybody gets blame for continuing the fight yeah and so my child and i came to this place to meet him eye to eye and face to face he made my daughter laugh then we embraced <laughs> we never knew what friends we had until we came to Leningrad. Uh, barf. <laughs> barf, right? Well, like, you have to do it. Yeah. It is a true story, and you have to tell the whole story. I'm definitely more sentimental than you are because I don't mind this part. But I, yeah. th but that's, but I think you've always known that about me. I'm a very yeah, sentimental yeah. fella, so I can be suckered in, and I if. If it is, this is what happened, and not too much poetic license, because who knows what exactly happened, then I do <laughs> like it. 
I it, feel like it was a kind of publicized story at the time. Yeah. He uh, either was like exchanging letters with this guy before they went to Russia. Or at the very least, he came backstage at one of the shows. Yeah. And they had a long conversation about their various, you know, their countries and how their countries handled various wars and things like that. So it's almost entirely true, I think. But did he make his daughter laugh? I want to know. That's <laughs> She's it. very polite. <laughs> I mean, Russian clowning probably doesn't work great on America. How old was his daughter at this time? Um, if she was like two, maybe. It might have been great, yeah. Do you remember ever finding clowns funny? No. I don't. I'm trying to remember how many clowns I was subjected to. Such a good like they were on TV. Yeah. It was in Tucson. It was like Wallace and Ladmo. Yeah. Remember those dorks? Yeah. They were like both sad clowns, <laughs> which was not great to start with. Did you ever go to Barnum and Bailey live, an actual Barnum and Bailey show? Never did. So I did. I remember getting taken to circuses and I remember liking clowns. I think I did. Uh huh. And the first time you see the car gag, it's a hilarious gag. As you know, when you haven't been told about it, you know, sure. of course, it's such a weird thing as a person who likes comedy to realize. They just do four jokes forever. Yeah. Forever. Forever. So it's not water, it's confetti. The car fits way too many people. <laughs> right. There's a breakaway something. There's going to be a breakaway chair. There's going to be a breakaway something. Mm -hmm. And then what are the other ones? There's and then there's just making faces, of course. Making faces and running around, falling down. Run, little bike, little bike. Oh, little bike. Now that I respect little bike. Yeah, there is a little skill there with a the little bike. There's a lot of skill with a little bike. I appreciate little bike. Yeah. And the car, but how many? Times, <laughs> after a while, you're like, I, I get it. So I don't Some know. If, stuff. I don't think I've ever seen this as a visual gag, but in in a movie, a good visual gag would be clown car going down the road, little bike rack, little bike. <laughs> nice. And they go to the beach, and there's not a lot of guys in it this time. There's a regular amount of people because they're just going to the beach. Just going to the beach. <laughs> it's not a show. Yeah. He's got clown face makeup on, but shirtless. Because he's got his bathing suit. Very crusty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing about this song. If it comes on, I have a, I have various Billy Joel playlists that I listen to. If it yeah. comes on, this is my thing. I'll listen to it. I got no problem with it. It's a fine song. I don't need to skip it. There's only ah. a few songs that I need to skip. And that's... And those are even songs I like sometimes. Like sometimes I'm like, no, nope, not listening to piano, man. Boop. Oh, sure. But uh, as far as those go, like, but every now and then I'm really not feeling we didn't start to fire. <laughs> yeah. Don't need to listen to this right now. Have you, by the way, heard the Fallout Boy? No. Is that a new? It is a new um updated version of we didn't start the fire oh with everything that's happened uh since the rock and roller cola wars wow do, does he do they start with rock and roller cola wars in advance don't know it they start around that time in advance and it's pretty kind of great oh uh, you know what uh, that is something i would enjoy looking at yeah I it came on the radio and I was like, "What is this heresy?" And then I was like, "Oh, it's great fun." We did not. So is it? We also didn't start the fire. <laughs> I don't know what they call it. I guess just we didn't start the fire. Uh, part it, part two or something. It would be so great if it was. Honestly, it was like agreed. He didn't start the fire, but neither did we. <laughs> <laughs> no one. There's no fire. 
Yeah. So it starts with Captain Planet, Arab Spring, L.A. Riots, Rodney King. Great. Great. Um, yeah, it's fucking great. Uh, I hope there's time. I hope he hears it and I hope he likes it so that there's some concert where he plays his and they come in. And That'd just keep really going. Fun. Huh? Just keep going from there. Yeah, because he's man, he is a big fan of new artists. He's very accessible. He did performed with Miley Cyrus and was like, God bless you, man. You I already liked you. Now you're with Miley Cyrus. Oh my God. I, I can't I I pulled up the lyrics uh and I just have to read this line world trade second plane what else do I have to say? Wow <laughs> trade second plane what else do I have to say? Wow. Wow, so that's the last that's as far as it goes. I think that's a mistake, honestly. If I were gonna fix it, I go ahead and put world trade in there, but as a like thing to the uh other one there has to be something reasonably trivial where you can't take it anymore because that's just become my favorite thing rock and roll a cola war i can't take it anymore i just ever since it occurred to me oh yeah that's the thing that breaks them it's just I, that makes me laugh every time <laughs> it's the best so it's got to be, gotta be something like you know second plane Jelly bracelets, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> uh, the only one I could think of was jelly bracelets. I'm not, I hope that's, that's pretty generation. good. I like that. That might be the right generation. I think that's about the right time. Oh, uh, my goodness. So, yeah, I, it's a skip for me, Leningrad. Yeah, you won't even bother. I won't even bother. I'm just like, there's nothing to wait for in the song. Well, that's true, man. It, it's just waiting to be over for sure. Yeah, yeah. Almost every other song is like, oh, I like that one part, or yeah. I'll wait till he sings this weird lyric. Um, but this one's like, no, this just it's not there, man. Yeah, I appreciate the story. I appreciate the the true story of it that happened. That's great. It's fucking great that he played concerts there. The lyrics but... are even good. Lyrics pretty good. But uh, I, I get that. Maybe we need a Fallout Boy cover. <laughs> really tear it up. Yeah, I also met that guy, or that guy died because he's got to be dead by now. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a bummer too. Yeah. Yeah, Victor. Well, now look at this beautiful picture. Oh, look at it. There's Tony Bennett. Yep. And this clue is about the dumbest, easiest clue, but as a tribute. And about the good man Tony Bennett, who passed away today. Passed away today at the age 37. What? Oh, 96. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is it is it still it's so it's a little sad when a 96-year-old dies, right? I I struggle with this. Yeah, it almost like there's a point where you're like, oh, that's fine. But then when they get past like 92, it gets to get sad again. <laughs> Oh, like a like a joke that comes around. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Oh, he almost made it to a hundred. Yeah. Well, yeah, like Betty White, ninety nine. So sad. Yeah. One of the yeah. things that's so amazing about Mr. Bennett and God, what a great man is. He waited a long time to retire. He did it at the right time. His last concert. Where did, I don't know if you saw him perform with Lady Gaga. Oh, great. I never saw. Oh, oh, great story because his his mind was gone. Not gone, but he definitely had advancing Alzheimer's. I shouldn't say it was advancing. Yeah. And he had in rehearsals not known her name and struggled. Wow. And when she came on stage and everybody said this about him, when he was performing, everything clicked into place. Yeah. And so she walked on the stage and he goes, Lady Gaga. And she comes <laughs> out and she said, it was almost impossible for me not to cry because he recognized me and he and he was connected with me. And she got to sing with him. And they were and there was this moment where he was Tony Bennett again. Yeah. 
And what a wonderful thing that what however the brain works, when it works, there's this lovely thing because he was just that fucking dude was a performer. Yeah, man. So the simplest of clues. All all I'm asking you to guess is what song they were singing. Uh, the entertainer. <laughs> no. <laughs> know what song it was? I don't know what song it was. New York State of Mind. That's right. That right. is. Right. A beautiful version of it and uh, a much appreciated version gets reposted. And it's a very nice version. And so, oh, simplest of clues. Look at it. I'm not positive I've seen it. Oh, you have to it down. Do you actually but enjoy it? I will check it out. Yeah. Because I probably will enjoy it. You guaranteed. Well, it's lovely. It's just one of those things. I really enjoy Billy Joel with people he admires. Yeah. He does that well. Does that well. And I really kind of, you know, he's closing out uh, Madison Square Garden. He's going to stop doing it. Yeah. I really want to maneuver so that I can go to the final show. Yeah. Because he will have a parade of guest stars. Oh, dude, that's true. It'll be so cool. Yeah. So I don't know when that'll be. February of 24 or 5, maybe. Yeah. We shall see. But I guess to get there. Oh, I'm going to find tickets and I'm going to go to New York. Now I have uh, what they call dubious trivia. Fuck. <laughs> and it's trivia about the Doobie Brothers, right? Mm-hmm. That's what you call yes. That. Name both of them. Uh, <laughs> I read somewhere that uh, this is the only song that he's never performed in concert. Which seems crazy to me. There must be more than one. Well. <clears throat> but it's pretty notable because it's not an early song. <laughs> that trivia question feels like it's broken. Right? Because because I want to say then you were the one. Uh, was never is is the question is or has never? Those are two different questions. So let me clarify. Is the question, this song is never played in concert or has never been played in concert? You get why those are two different. Has things. never, has never. Okay, cool. So I rescind my previous because I bet you you're with the one was played in concert once because that was written so long ago. And um, you only had so many songs, you got to play yeah. everything. All right. And that was the case. I'm going to do a, a, this is going to be the guess. And uh, it's uh, "Good Night, My Angel," the lullaby <laughs> song. I I feel like I've heard him play that song. Oh, it, really? Okay. I don't, well, he weirdly loves that song. It is a good song. It's just like I thought. Well, maybe that's a song you wouldn't play in concert because what the fuck are you doing? It is a song that is associated with an issue he had that he does not like to think about. And he feels he might have handled too flippantly. Oh. Great Wall of China? (laughs) No. What was it? It's uh, You're Only Human. Oh. That surprises me. Apparently heard the final mix and was like, I sound like I'm being flip about suicide. And I don't like that about me. So I'm not going to play this. That's amazing. If I got a chance to talk to the man, I would tell him that I respect that point of view, but he's a mistake. Right. I found that song useful to me. Yeah, right. I would love to tell him that. But, you know, because... I'll bet you're not alone. Wow, that's interesting. And... And but you know what? God bless you for feeling that way because that just the fact that you felt bad is actually a good thing. Yes, and although it does come back to what we were talking about, where he's like, "Oh, it's a song about a sad thing, so it should have sounded sad." <laughs> and you're like, "No, no, no, you yeah. don't. You don't have to do that." Yeah, and also I think that song should be jumpy because the song is asserting that it's all right. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Okay. Well, I find that both 
disappointing and charming at the same time. <laughs> that's that's if you was any way to sum up his musical career. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's such love in him worrying about that isn't that nice yeah yeah it's a little right. like not quite finger on the pulse but very sweet yeah i remember i uh i was having a conversation with my friend tom griffin and you would love tom tom is hilarious um i don't know if you guys have met because i can't remember anything i don't <laughs> think so but it's entirely possible because i don't remember anything either He's a funny dude. He's written some wrote some funny sketches when we were in a show together. And uh, um, when I was submitting to Weekend Update, every I would run jokes by him. Yeah. And he, and he wrote one that I was like, it bummed me. The joke he wrote that I submitted, it bummed me out. I was like, I can't believe they, oh, well. <laughs> oh, man. But, you know, you're dumping things into, I, I knew the whole time. Well, I'm dumping jokes into a chasm and I've just got to hope they notice me. Oh, well. That's just the way it is. <laughs> yeah, it's tough out there. Oh, and it was a great opportunity. And my and also it was a good exercise. It was good for my stand-up in general. You know, it's right. great. Um, you would love him. But I remember one time doing, and I won't say what the subject was because I don't want to embarrass anybody. It wouldn't embarrass Tom, but it might embarrass somebody else. I did a confessional about to him about, you know, sometimes I feel bad that I did this thing. Yeah. And Tom will always tell me the truth, like, well, you know, yeah, you're being a dick or whatever. And in this mm -hmm. case, he goes, it's very nice that you're trying to think about things that you've done, but you did nothing wrong. That other person was really out of line. Great. But it's good for you. It's nice that you're thoughtfully thinking about that. <laughs> right. And it was such a kindness on his part. It was always, in general, what I liked. That's very cool. Yeah, you're, you've come to the wrong conclusion, but good on you. Yeah, for, for doing, the work. doing some work. So, so here's what I was originally going to pick for next week. And we did trivia, all right, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Okay, Jesus. Oh, we did all right. Come on, brain. I was like, <laughs> the trivia question, didn't you? God. <laughs> Broken. <laughs> so originally, I wanted to do a bottle episode. And what I wanted to talk about was the <laughs> song he sang in that cartoon. Oh, uh, yeah. Dog. And maybe we'll do it again. But uh, if you don't mind, I'd also still like to do a bottle episode. Okay. And I'd like to talk about his duet with Tony Bennett, The Good Life. The Good Life. Okay. Are you down for that? Down for it. I don't think I know it, but I'd love to oh, do it. Great. So this will be worth your time. Um, on my Spotify list, one of my Spotify lists includes duets he's done. done. And now, obviously, he's done My Baby Grand, which he wrote, but with Tony Bennett. I think he did the right thing. He decided not to try to write a standard. Great. Which is a good instinct. Because um, he that's an era that he doesn't really belong to. Yeah. Um, so instead, they did a standard. Are you familiar with um, The Good Life? I don't think so. It's the good life to be <laughs> free. And da -da -da. Maybe. Uh, it's a very pretty song. Uh, Frank has a version, of course. Ella Fitzgerald, I think, has a version of it. And Tony Bennett and Billy Joel have a version. And I would like to, let's talk about that. We'll go ahead and talk about the lyrics because you got to talk about something. Yep. Um, but in general, like, it's it'll be fun to talk about Billy Joel, wannabe crooner. Yeah. And singing <laughs> side by side with an absolute legend. My God, Tony Bennett. Yep. My wife, by the way, saw Tony Bennett in his last concert. Oh, wow. Talked to her today on the phone. She's not here right now. She's helping a friend in L.A. who's dealing with some health stuff. Because my wife's a good lady. Um, and uh, But, she, you know, we talked. I was like, oh, Tony Bennett. She's like, God, I'm so glad I decided to spend that money and go see Tony Bennett. I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Pricey, of course. Worth Where it. was that? In L.A. at the, what's that outdoor theater in Hollywood? Oh, the, the Bowl? Bowl? The Bowl. The Bowl. Great. So I at the Hollywood Bowl. I've seen a few. Have you seen shows at the Hollywood Bowl? One. Well, so Hollywood. 
Oh, I bet it was great. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Uh, the Hollywood Bowl is a great place to see shows. Well, I'm impressed that Holland Oaks could draw enough people for the bowl. How long ago was it? Um, not too long ago. Less than 10 years. How'd they do? Sell out? Sell out. Man, it's uh, 4th of July. Oh, man. So they did their, they did a holiday and it's Hall and Oats. So it's Hall and Oats and then you watch the fireworks. How were their voices? Great. Yeah. They did, they did make every song like 15 minutes long. <laughs> They ended up doing like nine songs. <laughs> um, lots of saxophone time and lots of jamming, a lot of jazz. It's wow. like, so you you didn't get a lot, but they sound great. That's really cool. I like it when you see an old artist and they still got their chops. Yeah. Because there's so many times when they don't, and you're like, oh, well, it was nice to see them. Right. You're just ticking it off. Emphasis on C. Like, I guess Frank Sinatra's last couple concerts were a lot of chit chat singing. <laughs> right, right. You know, and that's fine. That's fine, but not why you want to see Frank. Yeah. And, but then I'm sure at that point, you got to figure if this is your first time seeing Frank, well, then that's your fault. Yeah, yeah, there was time. You had a million chances to see <laughs> this guy. He wasn't shy about touring. So, <laughs> well said. Yeah, like um, my huge regret is I ended up having to cancel seeing Prince. For oh, reasons okay. that made sense. And, but by all rights, that fucker should still be here. It's just such a heartbreaking thing. That is a problem. I did see him in Vegas. Bet it was amazing. It was amazing. Fuck. One of the greatest musicians, period, in yeah. rock and roll, and then just in general. In general. Wow. It was unreal. He was great. And he was so funny. That's what everybody says. He had a really, really sharp sense of humor. Yeah. And lots of good, like, crowd work. <laughs> it was wild. That's so funny. He seemed to me to be one of those guys. I wish to see him get older would have been amazing because, first of all, he's short. So short guys age a little better than tall guys. They just do. Yeah. yeah. Same reason why skinny guys age better than fat guys because there's less skin to go wrong. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, he would have just gotten even more comfortable in his old skin. He just would have. He would have made interesting music. Yeah, he was Not being interesting. Yeah, because that is hard. Some creating rock... new artists too, I'm sure. Oh my god, some rock and rollers aren't really musicians. I mean, they play, but they're not really musicians. Really, really, <laughs> right? See, Dave Grohl is right. Dave Grohl loves music, and he's all about it. And but there's some where you're like, you know, you are you're a rock and roller. That's what you are. Right. But are you a musician? Billy Joel's a musician. Yeah. And Prince was a fucking musician. Every instrument on the stage. Yep. Every instrument. And in, oh, man. Oh, like, what's his name? Um, who's fake Frank Sinatra, but we like him? Um, Buble? Harry Connick Jr. Yeah. Harry Connick Jr. Uh, I remember a story about him. He would get frustrated because when he was playing a certain song, the crowd would always be offbeat and clapping along. <laughs> So he did a trick and the trick worked and he explained it on some show and he goes, so what I do is I would let them start. And then when I get to this note, I would add a measure <laughs> and it would put them on the beat without knowing it and then continue <laughs> the song. So he would add an extra note just to fix it for himself. Amazing. And to be honest, if I'm in the crowd, I I yeah, yep. If I'm in the crowd, I don't care how many notes, I'm still not quite right. <laughs> oh, well, God bless Tony Bennett, and thank you all for listening. <laughs>